New analysis from Coindesk reveals 196 lawmakers took cash from Sam Bankman-Fried or other executives at FTX. Joining us now to discuss is Coindesk Deputy Managing Editor for Global Policy and Regulation, Jesse Hamilton. Good afternoon, Jesse. Hey, how's it going? Uh, how are you? So you've, you've been busy. You co-authored co this report. Who are some of the people that were uh, in, in Congress that were taking some of this FTX money? Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard. I mean, uh, we're talking oh, about one good. in three. One in three. Uh, that's, that's a lot of members of Congress. Uh, you know, I was actually just looking at the list of new members of the, uh, the House Agriculture Committee, uh, which is key to uh, oversight of token trading if they're not securities, which is a whole other can of worms. But six of the 12 new members of that committee are on this list of, of donations. They're among the 196 right. who received And, and we should uh, explain. Exactly. Yeah. We, we, we should explain the reason why the Agricultural Committee is because they oversee the CFTC, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, which is right now the only regulatory body that oversees any kind of crypto trading when it comes to futures, right? Because we still don't know who who's going to oversee the spot exchanges. So for the time being, as far as regulations go, the CFTC is the only game in town, and that's overseen by the uh, Agricultural Committee in Congress, correct? That's correct. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, but as far as sort of the wider picture here, of the 196, we have everybody from you know, the new Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, through a list of uh, prominent senators down to you know some of the newest folks on, on Capitol Hill. Um, and as more information comes to light, you know, I think this is really going to be fast. I mean, absolutely fascinating. So we've primarily uh, in this situation, we've got three of the top executives of FTX, uh, you know, uh, former you know uh, CEO and founder of Sam Bankman Fried, Nishad Singh, who led engineering at the company, and uh, Ryan Salem, uh, co CEO of FTX Digital Markets, and these three are giving money to this absolutely massive cross section of yeah. Congress. And what's sort of interesting about it is, you know, you can see that they don't often overlap in their giving, you know, suggesting that there may have been some level of, of coordination there. And uh, Bankman Fried has been charged with you know, violating uh, federal campaign finance laws. So we'll see if you know, the prosecutors are alluding to improper conduct with these other FTX folks who, who haven't, to be clear, haven't been charged with anything at this point. Right. And it runs the gamut from very, you know, a couple of thousand dollars to a camp. You know, there are campaign limits by which uh, uh, people can donate to these local uh, to these congressmen. But then you also have Ryan Salame, as you were mentioning, gave to Kevin McCarthy. It's something like two bill two million dollars to his uh, to a pack that he basically controls, a leadership pack, which uh, obviously helped, I, although apparently not good enough. I mean, it was a really close call for the Republicans. Uh, nonetheless, it seems that you know Sam Bankman-Fried made a lot of hay about the money he was giving to Democrats, but he was really giving to Republicans, correct? And um, th this kind of brings up the question of this: you're talking millions of dollars. But they're but these congressmen are now talking about donating it instead of giving it back potentially to the creditors of FTX. Correct? Right. So there's a, there's a very important distinction to make here. And so this this analysis that that we've just released examined direct contributions to the campaigns. Now that's going to be your sort of more typical giving uh, that's that has that comes with limits, right? Limits for individuals to donate up to $2,900 per election, $5,800 uh, for primary and a general for any any one candidate. Now, that doesn't represent the vast majority of campaign contributions that that uh, these folks were making in the tens of millions, uh, which was, I can't, you can't underline enough how sort of amazing <laughs> this was yeah. that that these guys sprang out of nowhere uh to basically uh, be among the uh the top 10 top 11 uh campaign individual campaign contributors this session but the distinction is that the that 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 the sort of vast majority all those millions went into largely went into packs super packs which give in a, in a different way and have different limits obviously not not aren't very limited at all uh, and those those uh, spend their money uh, through what's called independent expenditures, 
uh, typically on TV spots, uh, you know, yeah. direct mailers for campaigns, and those, uh, you know, those eat up all, all the money, but they don't have to be directly approved by a campaign. So that's a distinction. Yeah, those of us who have run for office, and full disclosure, I've done that a few times in, in, in my previous life as a, you know, as a as a local politician. But uh, those of us who have run for office know that you get a few checks from from one source. Uh, you know, one company all of a sudden writes you a bunch of checks uh, from from different executives and whatever. It, it starts to add up, and it starts to make an impact. So even if it is limited to a couple of thousand dollars here and there, you get three or four of those you start paying attention because you know that there's a gravy train. Nonetheless, you guys have, you reached out to all 196 uh, politicians, all, all 196 members of Congress. Uh, and, and I say it's House of Representatives and Senate, correct? And, and you, you got on the phone correct. and uh, you ran up Coindesk's uh, phone bill. And so what were the responses you were getting? So those who did respond, which, you know, isn't is never as many as we, we would like, but probably better than most surveys get, uh, they said mostly that they already gave it or are planning to give it to charity. Uh, that's clearly politically expedient. Um, but some others are holding back to see what happens with the bankruptcy process and the, the effort from FTX's new team, uh, the bankruptcy team, to look into the charitable and, and political donations from these FTX former executives uh, to see if there's a way to get it back. So Jesse, uh, what does this mean? Uh, you know, how will this impact future crypto re regulation? I, I, I mean, what, the, all of a sudden you have all these lawmakers who took in this money from FTX and now they're gonna decide potentially who's going to regulate spot exchanges, for instance, who's gonna regulate uh, DeFi, some, some are calling, for, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, definitely stable coins are on the table. How will all of this, all, all these donations, even though they, you know, they say they don't want it anymore, nonetheless, what will it mean for the future? The, the extent of, of this relationship between you know, top FTX executives and, and Congress is really you know, kind of mind blowing. Um, so now a third, a third of the senators and representatives uh, in this session, which just started, are wearing this around their necks. So there are two schools of thought, basically. One is that it shows that they're that these individual lawmakers are at least crypto sympathetic, and they may deal the industry a, a gentle hand this year. You know, when it comes to writing new crypto laws. The other school uh, is that the lawmakers branded with this will go way out of their way to separate themselves from the industry. And of course, we'll we'll get a, f a first sense of that, I think, uh, at the this congressional session's opening hearings on crypto, which uh, could get on the calendar as soon as next month, uh, maybe the month after. So either way, the FTX collapse will definitely color every crypto discussion yeah. in Washington this year. Yeah, yeah, you know, the McCain-Feingold effect, I guess, is the best way to describe it. You know, John McCain received some money from from, the, from uh, Keating. Uh, he was one of the Keating Five. It was a, a, it greatly affected his uh, reputation, and he sought uh, redemption by coming up with a, a, a massive uh, overhaul of campaign finance uh, re reform in Congress, the McCain-Feingold bill, uh, which changed a lot of how that was done. So. You know, getting back to this, all these, all this money that was given, some are giving it as donations, but uh, what are we talking about with clawbacks? I mean, is that that's something going on here? Yeah, I mean, I, that's absolutely a factor at this point. Uh, so the smart money and and some legal precedent seems to suggest we haven't seen the the end of this money. Uh, even though the tens of millions these guys put into campaigns has already been spent, uh, I think probably down to the penny. You know. Uh, the bankruptcy may end up clawing it back, depending on what the court ends up saying. So if so, the actual vendors could hear from this bankruptcy. Uh, in the case of these direct donations to campaigns that we detail in this analysis, uh, those campaigns would be asked to, to just give the money back to a bankruptcy fund. Uh, if they already gave it to a charity, it's tough luck. Uh, they still have to pay. Yeah. If they gave it back to the individual or, or to a government agency, uh, things would get a little bit more complicated. But I think there's a good chance we'll be talking about this down the road. 
Well, hey, listen, as long as they, they, we keep talking about it, we all have jobs. So uh, as we should note, a spokesman for Sam Bankman-Fried declined to comment for the story, although, you know what, quite frankly, Sam Bankman-Fried seems shockingly willing to, to comment on just about anything. So thank you, Coindesk Deputy Managing Editor for Global Policy and Regulation, Jesse Hamilton.